Hi everybody, Riganite71 here, back with you for another episode. You know, a few episodes back I told you about spanking your tomatoes, and I also teased that I was going to talk about it uh, in my part two of uh, drunken composting. Well, today we're back and we're going to talk tomatoes um, and how to spank them. Now this does not involve plant abuse, uh, it's simply a way to take care of your tomatoes. So we're going to talk about spanking your tomatoes and just tomatoes in general. You know, I feel kind of bad been poking fun at my dad who is a great gardener and a big tomato guy. <laughs> I uh, put these in the ground about four weeks ago and uh, being the neophyte gardener that I am, I left the peat pots on. I didn't know that was bad. I thought they'd break down, you know. But everybody says you're supposed to take the peat pots off. You know? I started getting tomatoes before him though. And so I would start sending him emails with the counts. You know, hey, I've got six tomatoes. I've got uh, 10 tomatoes now, 12 tomatoes. Woo. I stopped sending emails at 35. Uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had 35 tomatoes four weeks after planting them, actually, uh, to be more accurate. Uh, and I wasn't going to count them anymore, no more. Uh, I figured after 35, why count them every day? Until today, when I decided I was going to do this video, I thought, well, I should count them one more time. As of right now, I've got 66 tomatoes growing on 8 out of 12 plants. Now, the other four are single-stem tomatoes, and they, we purchased those in really small little, little uh, packages, and we started those, so they're, they're a little bit behind. But these tomatoes are growing with the peat pots dissolving down in the ground, which is which I think is kind of amazing. 66 tomatoes. The two right behind me here are better boy tomatoes, and they are just going nuts. Uh, I have 23 on each one of them. That's 46 tomatoes just on two of the plants. So I like the better boys, even though they're hybrids. I definitely like them. So why do I spank my tomatoes? Well, it's pretty simple. I want to keep them in line. <laughs> now, I spank them because the vibration helps uh, pollination. You've got the yellow stamen, which uh, inside of it, there's actually a green uh, uh, pistil. And the pollen, pollination, all takes place in the one flower. So when you spank your tomatoes, you're helping to stimulate that pollen and help it get in there. Uh, this is especially important if you have a greenhouse, you have some place where you don't have airflow. Otherwise, you need a nice good wind or you need insects for pollination. The spanking will actually help your pollination uh, and improve your, your pollination rates on your flowers. Personally, I think it also helps with uh, stimulate uh, growth from roots to the stem, you know, and up through the stem and into your leaves. Uh, and it keeps them in line. All right, so when you're going to go to spank your tomatoes, all you have to do is take a little newspaper like so and uh, roll it up. And then you're going to lightly and repetitively tap the stem from the base of the plant and work your way up. And you're just going to lightly tap up the tomato plant. See how it's shaking it there? You're going to work your way up the stem. You can even do the bottoms of the leaves. You're going to be very careful though around these, these flowering areas not to hit around those. We want to leave those alone. What we do want to do though is promote growth. So we're just going to spank our tomato plants like this. It's going to help with pollination and hopefully stimulate more growth. It certainly is working over here. When you get into a deep plant like this, just come around to a side that you can get to, you know. If you didn't watch the other video, by the way, you notice I have red Christmas balls hanging. The birds pick on those, hopefully. And when they realize there's nothing to it, they'll leave the other ones alone when they turn. We're just going to work our way up the plant. Now, if you have it staked off, something you could do is just take the stake and give it a shake, like so. We're getting good movement and vibration through the whole plant that way. Now, I've also heard there's a sonic sound that bugs put off. 
And if you take an electric toothbrush, you can pretty much get the same effect by running it along the stem very carefully. And you can get some of that beneficial sonic effect. I don't know if there's anything to that or not, but that's what I've heard. I really don't use the electric toothbrush. I just spank my tomatoes and use compost and compost tea. And it seems to work just fine. These have been in the ground for five weeks. And I've got over 65 tomatoes. Lots of salsa. By the way, it's also beneficial to spank your peppers. Yep, that's what I said. Spank your peppers. Why? Well, you got to keep these hot heads in line, you know. And it definitely promotes uh, development here, as you can see. I've got peppers all over this one. I've got them forming here. They'll, there they are. And over here on our sweet banana peppers, I've got them staked. We've been having a lot of wind. And as you can see, I've got some forming there. And I've got the cutest little bitty one right there. Okay, here's my better boys right here. As you can see, I did the same thing down low here. I removed every single stem up to the first set of blossoms, and this is the result. Now, you'd still get them, but what's happening is, is I'm actually directing the energy into the fruit and upward. Into the fruit and upward, and that's a good thing. As you can see over here, I've got this one trimmed off too. It's coming up. And there's a set of flowers. The big boy right here is taking a little bit longer to produce. Now another thing that I'll do is I'll take the suckers off of the plant. If you're new to gardening, that might be a vulgar sounding term, but it's really not. Um, suckers simply form where the main stem and a branch and you get a branch off and what will happen is you'll have a new new growth starting to come in like right here and all you have to do is peel it back like that and off it comes those will take energy from your plant now you want to leave the ones on top because that's where your new growth upward is going to come from so leave those alone but along the way when you see little suckers get them off your plant and you'll have more energy for your fruit and your vertical growth. Now, if I've missed one and it's starting to produce tomatoes or tomato flowers, I'll probably leave it alone, but what you can do is you can top off the branch after that. That way you get the fruit and you get the sucker and it'll stop growing there. I say that, but you can see right here and you gotta watch out for this. Whoops, sorry about that. I actually cut it right here before, cut a sucker off, and look what's happening. Sometimes you'll get new suckers growing back, and so just pinch it off. I don't lose a lot of blossoms, but if you're having a problem, apple juice might be the thing to do. Go to the store and get you some apple juice, 100%. Get you a little handheld sprayer, kind of like oh, this one right here. Put the apple juice in it and then keep it in the fridge. Anywhere we have blossoms, we're just going to spray. Spray the apple juice. And let that methane help set the blossoms. The apple juice puts off methane. This acts like a ripening agent and it'll help you set your blossoms. When you see new fresh blossoms, give them a little spray and see if that doesn't help out your uh, problem losing your blossoms. Another thing that might be happening is uh, if you've got a lot of nitrogen in your soil, um, you may have too much nitrogen and not enough of what gardeners call P and K, you know, uh, potassium and phosphorus. If you're using compost, you're probably not going to have that problem, you know, if you've got well composted, good soil material. But if you're feeding your plants with a lot of fertilizer, it might be high in, in nitrogen and not enough in the other. Typically, compost and compost tea will help you take care of that. I have not had a problem with that. And like I said, I haven't lost very many blossoms this year. One of the ways to recognize if you've got nitrogen issues, sorry about my shadow there, 
is what's going to happen is you're going to have a whole lot of green growth. You're going to get some blossoms that are going to wind up falling off. That green growth tells you you've got a lot of nitrogen. But if you're short on potassium and phosphorus, then you're, you're not going to have the energy necessary and the nutrients to produce the fruit. So that might be part of the problem as well. Another thing I want to tell you is that if you're a smoker, make sure you're washing your hands before you handle your tomato plants. Uh, burnt smoke or the nicotine or whatever that gets on your fingers can cause a big problem, a big uh, blight disease, you know, like tobacco. Um, it, it's something about the burnt smoke uh, that can get on your fingers. So make sure you're washing your hands before you handle the tomato plants. It's a good idea to wash your hands, period, even if you're not a smoker. Aren't tomatoes wonderful? There's so much you can do with them. I know Bubba Gump said shrimp was the fruit of the sea. Tomatoes are definitely the fruit of the land. There's so much you can do with them, from salsa to slices. They're just dandy. Now all these tips that I've given you, that's, I'm not saying it's my way or the highway. Everybody has a different way of gardening. These are just the things that I do and I think you might uh, find useful if you try to include them in your gardening program. So I hope it's helpful. I hope you found it helpful. I enjoy having you. I enjoy doing these videos. I like looking at other people's gardens. And we're going to do that in our next episode. So make sure you subscribe because in the next episode, we're going to go see the guy that taught me what I know. Uh, my dad, Reaganite Sr. He's got a great garden south of town. So we're going to take a drive out there and go on a little field trip and see what he's got growing on. Sorry, John. In any event, Reaganite71 here. I'm wishing you a great day and happy gardening.